Welcome to the channel, my name is Franco, and today in the workshop, I'll be sharing with you an install of a much needed accessory on my Honda Snowblower. Some of you guys might not know this, but Honda Snowblowers do not come with heated grips from the factory. So today, I plan on changing that. I will be installing a set of Oxford heated grips on my own machine, which is a 2017 HSS 1332 ATD. Now this is their flagship model with all the very functional bells and whistles. And to sum it up, it's a complete snow beast. So if you're interested in seeing the machine in action, please go check out my other videos. But right now, I will be pulling in the machine into the workshop here, and I'll get started. Now this should come off easily, but there are two connections here for the hour meter and as well as the joystick that you need to disconnect at the bottom of the uh, control panel here. So I'm going to unplug the harnesses. There we go. So we can now raise this out of position. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the latch for the battery cover and pop this cover up and off the machine. Alright, so next I'm going to use a pick tool to help me break the bond on the factory grips where there might be some rubber cement underneath the grips to keep them in place. work my way around So really quick, I'm going to use my caliper here to measure the diameter of the bars just in case you want to know them for future reference. So 
So the bars on this Honda are one inch ten thousandths. So it's not a true exact one inch bar. It's oversized by ten thousandths. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna go over the Oxford hot grips that I chose for my Honda Snowblower and what comes in the box. The reason why I chose this particular model is because of its high quality design and construction and its ability to have five different levels of heat, as well as the ability to be installed very easily on my machine. As you can see here, this is the wiring diagram. It's very straightforward. All you have to do is hook it up to the positive and negative terminal of your battery. Everything has harnesses, so everything snaps in together and makes it a quick and clean install. So some of the features of the Hawk Grips is that it's sealed for life, it has rainproof electronics, it draws under 4 amps of power off your battery, it can also go up to 50 degrees centigrade which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It fits 1 inch bars which is perfect for my application here up with the Honda. And also you can trim these grips down to 119 millimeters if you have to off the ends. So really quick, you can see here they offer a couple different mounting solutions. This particular model is meant for a cruiser style motorcycle. That's because it accommodates for one inch bars. So inside the box you're going to find a lead that connects to your battery, which is fused and has a block connector on the end of it. You will find your heated grips, which are nicely jacketed, heat shrunk with ball connectors. Very nice over mold construction. You have this collar that goes all the way around uh, the end of the grip. It comes with removable end caps. So they also include a set of black chrome end caps. These are the chrome colored ones. Uh, they're not metal, they're actually plastic. Okay, so very nice flame pattern on the grips themselves. The grips are much thicker than the Honda OEM grips that I took off. So I got big hands, so this is gonna actually gonna might be actually be better for my situation. So as you can see here, this bore is smaller than the bore on the left here, which is made to accommodate for some sleeves that I, I will show you in just a second. This will slide right over the handlebars right now the way it is, nice and tight. Uh, this is going to need some work. There are some adapters that come with the, uh, the grips for different type of motorcycles, um, essentially throttle tube adapters that would be meant for install on a motorcycle. So here is the heat controller. Very nice sealed unit. You have a plus and minus button which is very tactile, has a good feel. You have five levels of heat adjustment here. You have 30%, 40%, 50, 75, and 100. Jacketing is very nice on this as well. This is where you would hook up your two heated grips. And this right here is where the battery lead hooks up to the heat controller. So what's also included is a throttle tube adapter and some other kind of sleeve for some other kind of application. Now I'm going to be using this sleeve here for my application. I have to super glue this onto the inside of the grip. Uh, the grip that has the larger inside diameter. If you can see there, this one here is larger on EID compared to this one here. So this one is going to fit right over the handlebar as is, nice and snug. But this one here, I have to insert this sleeve and make it work. This actually runs freely over the handlebars, so I'm going to have to come up with some kind of um, shim in there or even just like wrap electrical tape so I can take up that slack and then just press the grip on there. So 
So I'm gonna mark this throttle tube adapter because I'm gonna cut off this excess portion I'm not gonna be using. So you're gonna have your different mounting solutions. This will just go right on the handlebar. And then you can mount the controller right to this face here. So I won't be using this. So this is the bracket I will be using right here. Comes with some mounting hardware. This is just like a straight bracket. You mount the controller right to this face here, and then I will mount it to another mounting bolt on the snowblower. You have another package with some super glue, zip ties, and an adhesive pad. And these are the black chrome end caps that go in the grips if you would like to change them out. All right, so I was looking at the manual and I wanted to find out um, if this thing draws any standby power off the battery when it's completely off, and it does. Um, even though it's a very little amount, there is still a draw on the battery. And according to here, it's saying it's 71 microamps, which is 0 0.071 milliamps. So that's almost a tenth of an amp, if I'm correct. Um, therefore, a long-term connection will not flatten a battery. So today I'm just going to install it just like the manufacturer recommends and if I have an issue I may go ahead and install a relay if I really find the need to. If I were to install a relay it would look something like this. It would probably be a mini relay which is good for 20 amps or so and this is a larger relay which is a 40 amp relay and pretty much you would just wire this up so um, when you turn the ignition on it actually energizes up the heated grip circuit. And then when you turn the key off, it completely cuts the power off to that circuit and you won't have any power draw on the battery. So a big factor in me purchasing this particular heated grip system is because of the battery saving mode that's built into this intelligent heat controller. So what that means is that if the voltage drops below 11 and a half, it'll actually shut off the heated grips completely without further draining your battery. Whenever I add something on my pieces of equipment, I like to make it look like it was factory equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint this mounting bracket flat black. That way it matches the rest of the Honda uh, color scheme. So next I'm going to trim down the end of the adapter tube, the excess amount here that I don't need with the bandsaw. Alright, so there it is. Now I'm just going to clean it up to its final size on the grinder and uh, deburr it by hand. All right, so there's no more burrs on there. It's got a nice chamfered edge. 
And now it's ready to go. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up the handlebars as well as the inside of the grips to get them nice and prepped for the hand grip cement that I'll be using. This is Honda brand hand grip cement. I've had this stuff for a few years now and it's, uh, it's some great stuff. This stuff dries very fast, so I kind of want to work quickly. I'm going to apply it to the bottom end only, and then I'm going to slide in the grip, twisting it as I go up. All right, so I squared this thing up nice. I'm putting the strain relief on the outboard side of the snowblower, that way it doesn't interfere with any of the controls, especially the height adjust for the auger housing. All right, so on the right hand side, I have the sleeve that has to go on first. I'm gonna use a shim because there is a size difference between the Honda handlebar and the, um, the sleeve itself. It's about a 20 thousandths difference. So what I'm gonna do is work this on here with the shim in place. I have it looped through. And I'm gonna bring this right up, right up to there. And I need to clock it so it fits just right. I'm going to use the grip and clock it just the way I want and square it up. So I just came in with an X-Acto knife and I just trimmed out that tail that was left behind from that shim that I had for the, uh, for the sleeve. Same thing for the front here. Alright, so now that I'm happy with the positioning of the hand grips, I'm going to go ahead and take off the right hand side grip and glue it down to the sleeve. Pretty much don't want this to move around once it's installed, so I want kind of generous with the hand grip cement. I'm gonna move it around, get it worked in there. So now I'm gonna let that dry for a while, make sure they're rock solid. I don't want to interfere with the curing process. All right, so next I cut some pieces of white fiberglass insulation to about six inches long, seven inches long, and I'm going to insert it inside the handlebar. That way all the heat that's generated by the heated grip is gonna stay right in this area and not work its way down the handlebar. So I'm just gonna roll this up and twist it into place. Having this foil backing on it really helps because it keeps the fiberglass 
intact and all together as you push it down the tubing. This should reach about here and it's going to keep all that nice heat that's being generated right in the local area instead of spreading out. I may put some blue Loctite on these end caps if they come undone on me while I'm snow blowing, but for right now I'm just going to thread them on there. Uh, to its bracket, which is already spray painted flat black. That way it'll blend right into the Honda. Now I'm just going to put this here temporarily that way I can get my wiring situated. So the control being on the right hand side is a great idea because it doesn't interfere with any other operation on the machine and I did not want to mount it on the top of the control panel uh, and make holes in that panel and usually there's a lot of snow that builds up on there so it wasn't a good place. Uh, right here is perfect because it's tucked down below that control panel near the key area. It does not interfere with me operating the key at all. And um, I can come in and just press on this to control my heat settings. On this machine, you have to have your left hand always on the machine. Your right hand is usually free. So that was a kind of a factor. I can come in with my right hand and just press on this and operate the joystick for the chute. All right, so the key controller wire comes down the factory harness up past the starter solenoid and right to the back of the battery here. I'll show you guys a close-up of this after when I'm done. But that's one out of the way. Now I'm going to take one of these handlebar wires and do the same thing.
All right, so this is what it looks like so far. I have the heat controller here running down, tying into this area. So same thing with each one of the grips. They come down the drive and the clutch cable, tie into the factory harnesses, and then over into the middle here behind the battery. So now all I have to do is connect the positive and negative terminals. Connection there and bada bing. All right, so here's the back end. After I tidied everything up, I have the heated grip fuse. This is the fuse for the battery tender lead, which is down here. And everything is wrapped up nice. All right, so now the joystick and the hour meter are now plugged back in. Key is in the machine. All right, so I have the charger hooked up. Now I'm gonna turn on the heat control to 100% and see how long it takes to come up to temperature. And I will time it on my phone here. After five minutes, I'm gonna take a measurement with the IR thermometer and see what I get for a reading on each one of the grips. So right now we're at 72 degrees. Seventy five degrees. I can see the heating elements in the grip, which is kind of cool with this. I have a visual of the temperature gradient. It's already at eighty degrees. All right, we'll see after five minutes what it is. All right, so it's been about six minutes now, and let's take a measurement and see what they're at. They're at 123 degrees, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. hundred and thirty one degrees. A 
144 degrees. That insulation is really helping, isn't it? 146. I didn't think I was going to get that kind of temperature out of these grips, but they are freaking hot. Wow. They're getting almost too hot to touch. Oh, wow. Right up here, they're super hot. 169 degrees. Check that out. 171. This has been going on for about 10, 15 minutes now. 171 degrees, 173. Look at those readings. You can actually see the heating element in the grip with this IR thermometer. I still have it on 100%. The hottest I can get it over here in this grip is about 160. There we go, it's 160. 61, 165, there we go. So here's the controller where it's mounted. It's right just underneath the key, and it's as simple as clicking and turning this thing down to suit your comfort level. We're at 30%, 40%, 50, 75, 75, and 100%. So I'm coming in with the Dremel tool and I'm just making two relief cuts all the way down to this diameter of the grip. That way it allows full engagement of the levers when I go to operate the machine. So I have to do the same thing to here. I already came in and cut it out with the razor blade. Now I need to blend in and go deeper with the uh, Dremel tool and grind away some of this plastic structure underneath. So this is what the reliefs look like where they're done. The relief on either side, that way the lever can come down and has plenty of clearance and totally bottoms out on the back side of the uh, heated grip. Same thing over here. So because I increased the diameter of the grips, now when I engage the auger clutch, it does not lock into place. This is supposed to lock into place and it's not supposed to be doing that right now. So the solution is to come over here and to loosen up these two bolts. This will allow you to have some freedom in the rotation of the lever and will give us extra stroke that we need to fully engage that mechanism on the inside here that holds it into position. So it's as simple as backing off these two bolts. So what I'm going to do is put my finger inside here and push back on this mechanism and push forward on the lever. Now as I do that, I'm going to come in and tighten the bolts.
by extending that stroke, it gives us enough play now that once we engage the levers, it locks into place. And it won't release until I release the drive clutch lever, which is how it's supposed to function. Well guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.